what they go do with me now I'm still a talk of the town Don't need assistance, I'm hooking them down We turn the smiles into frowns Can't hop out, then we clearing the crowd Time to play, don't get it fucked up We don't need you, but nigga, we wanted you Love condition. Gotta show from a distance The only way shit gonna humble you What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani And you're tuned in to another Talk of the Town interview And who we got in the building today? It's Harlem, baby Fergie, baby <laughs> Shit me, kid me I know what the fuck going on, man GGU, we outside, hold on. What is that? What's, the, what's that? Uh, That's my shit. That's my <laughs> Where did that come from? If you know, you know. If you don't get it, then I don't know what to tell you. But, uh, Hey, right, you ain't got to do me like that. <laughs> All right, well, yes, we got Fergie, baby, Mr. Most Creative for 2021. Congratulations y'all. on that. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. How does that feel? Like, I mean, it feel good, but, you know, we got mad work to do. So, But mm -hmm. it feel good. I'm thankful. I'm, I'm blessed, you know. Without my my videographer, my team, a lot of this shit would be wouldn't be possible. But mm -hmm. you know, I'm blessed. But it's time to up keep it. it. Yeah, it's time to up it. You feel me? Okay, so walk me through your creative process. Of course, we're talking mm -hmm. about your creativity. So, what does that look like? How do you like get into all the stuff that you're doing visually, musically? Um, like I said, like I like a lot of things I, I think, but I think about. But I also come to my team, and mm -hmm. you know, we all just come together and put our heads together. And think of the best possible shit to where we can distinct ourselves from everyone else. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we have fun with this shit at the end of the day. We want to do shit differently. We want to catch people's eye. And that's what it, what it is. It's like everybody coming together with their own ideas and just creating one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times I write, I write the treatment, but there's other assets or other resources that people bring to the table that make the whole project amazing. Okay. So, so what does your team look like? Dumb right there. For the people who can't see, yeah. <laughs> for the people who are watching at home, what does your team look like? My team is all stars, you feel what I'm saying? Everybody is a fucking juggernaut themselves, you feel me? Like, I could name drop. I got Cajun Waters, the engineer of Groove Guards Unite. I got Cool Money Quan as the artist. Um, Tim Everett right there. He's the R&B Groove right there, the R&B bruh man, you feel what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I got Bullion, top Top three, not even top three, top one videographers in the town, you feel what I'm saying? Brisby at all times, blood up, you are. <laughs> but yeah, the team is just amazing, you feel what I'm saying? Like, everybody know they role, everybody know they part, nobody stepping on each other's toes, everybody's at their own leader, mm -hmm. you feel what I'm saying? So that's really what my team is, Groove yeah. Guards Unite, the label, you know? Talk your shit. Yeah. So how important do you think it is to have a solidified team? Because you know- Very important. It is. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, like, they'll, like, bounce between videographers mm -hmm. or producers or whatever, like, so you think, like, it works in your favor using yeah. the same people? Oh yeah. Time. Everything, my, my goal is to have everything in-house. Mm -hmm. We don't got to go nowhere else. Everything, we got the uh, graphic designers, we got the videographers, we got the engineers, the producers, the artists, everything. So mm -hmm. it's like, you feel me? We save money like that, and it's mm -hmm. more lit, and it's more of a prize when the shit really hitting because we did it ourselves, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like. A team is real, especially if y'all know y'all role, a team is very essential into your success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, does that go into, like, GGU, like, the group? Yeah, yeah, So, yeah. all of that Hell is a part yeah. of that. Hell yeah. Did you have the vision already, or did it just happen, like, you was working with the same people, and it was like... Both. I had the vision, and I was working with the same people, so it just made it even easier. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just brung niggas into the vibe. You know, Cool was cool one of the main founders of the group, guys, and we just upped it from there, like, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So... Yeah, both sides. Okay, okay. So let's bring it back a little. Mm -hmm. So you from Harlem. Yes, sir. How is that like, like growing up <laughs> in Harlem? I'm a Brooklyn girl, so of yeah. course. So what, 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 what's life in Harlem like? Wavy shit, jiggy shit, home of the hustlers, you feel what I'm saying? It's like, you just got to learn how to adapt. It was fun, too. Like, you know, Harlem is like 50 blocks, so it really was lit every avenue, every street. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like... It was just lit, you know, growing up to dip set and shit. You, I, don't, I, I really can't answer that. Like, I'm a Harlem nigga. You just home okay. with the hustlers. Like, we get, it, we get shit done. Okay, so who were you listening to growing up? Dipset, um, 50. Um, who else? Buster, Missy, um, Jay. For me, shit like that. Okay, so at what point did you decide to start making music? Um... My, my niggas, for real. They oh, started, yeah. okay. Like, that's why I always say, without my niggas, I wouldn't even be here right now. They started this rapping shit. Mm -hmm. And they always knew I had the potential, but I, I used to just do it on some calm hobby shit. Mm -hmm. After a while, they was like, nah, you need to really do this for real. So my first single was Bleachers, which went crazy. And then after that, I'm like, maybe I should do this for real. And then my fan base is real heavy with me. So I was like, I got to do this for them. I like it myself, but I really do it for the people. Cause, you feel me? Okay, so being that you didn't, 
take music serious so you didn't even think that you were going to be an artist what was the plan like yeah, that's crazy because i know you graduated with what like your criminal was it criminal justice yeah you graduated with your criminal justice degree mm -hmm. so like what was what was the vision i don't know like i can't even tell you that i was just going <laughs> day by day after uh -huh. like when i graduated i was just going day by day get some bread have a job and shit but i knew i wanted more for myself at the end of the day i didn't know if i was going to go into music like, I, I, my, fa my passion was fashion, but I didn't know where to start. So I was, like, I was just winging it mm -hmm. until, like, and music happened to really drop on my lap. Mm -hmm. Like, I was surrounded by people who was doing music. I love music myself. Mm -hmm. So it was only right to do that, and I'm nice at what I do. You know what I'm saying? So it just makes sense. Was music pre- or post-graduation? Post. Post. Oh, yeah. so it was perfect timing. Yeah, it was perfect timing. So yeah. what was the reaction from, like, the people around you when you started making music? I can't even tell you that, Leah, that I still can't explain it because it's still, it's a lot because I didn't think from my first single I would blow up like that or at least get the type of fan base that I got now. Mm -hmm. So it was just, it's unbelievable. Like I said, I'm blessed, I'm, I'm grateful, and like I do it for them. So it's, it's still to this day unbelievable mm -hmm. that I got this type of core fan base, you feel me? We pushing, people believe in me and my game, and we, we ain't going to stop until we on that jet, and we still going to keep going. So who would you say is your fan base? Who do you make your music for? Whoever listen to me, like I don't know, like, so I my music is for the people, like to con like to build confidence to to us. Like, you wake up every day, you go to the gym, you want to listen to my music. It's mm -hmm. a vibe setter. You know what I'm saying? Whatever mm -hmm. you want to do in, in during your day, you throw me on, you get hype. In the car, you get hype. You're going to get money. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. Throw fur on. I bet you get hype. Like I'm just a vibe setter. I want to I want to have I want to make people feel fun and feel confident about themselves. Mm -hmm. And I talk my shit. I talk realistic shit that people go through, especially New Yorkers. I mean, and you got the energy. Like, yeah, even sitting here talking to you, mm -hmm. like, you know, you talking your talk. Like, is mm -hmm. there anything outside of music that you would see yourself doing? Like, um, yeah, I'm going to let you answer that. Like I said, uh, like, once I reach that certain platform in music, I want to branch off to fashion. Okay, nothing, like, personality-wise. Because before we started recording, you know, we was talking about, like, mm -hmm. podcasts. Would be, mm -hmm. Like, you really have, like, that personality. You, so there's nothing you. that you would want to do, like... I mean, I'm part of the please. You feel me? Shout out please part TV. Please. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> she got her own podcast, her own show coming out with Chelsea Naya. Y'all got to meet her as well. That's another part of the person. Another person that is incredible on my team. Mm -hmm. She's a superstar within herself as well. But yeah, like, I'm, I'm just on a music tip. Um, I'm also, you know, trying to up my, my, my friends too. Tim Everett, one of the most talented niggas I ever met. Just up his shit. Cajun Waters, cool yeah. money. So that's what it, that's what it is. Okay, so um, back to the music. So I saw, and I think it was like a major stage, um, like the quick little snippet that you did with them. You said your the studio is your happy place. It is, it is. So what is it about the studio? Like, set the vibe for us. Like, when you go in the studio, what does that look like? All right, we go in the studio, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Before I make any music, I throw on music just to get the vibe. We roll our little blunts, we smoke a little, um, roll our little blunts, drink a little Henny, you feel me? Get the vibe right, everybody vibing. And then we just throw on beats or my man Cajun cook up beats. Mm -hmm. Just literally just vibe. We listen to it. We may write down some shit. And eventually we just go in the booth and start recording. Okay. So mm -hmm. so how do you choose what songs you want to drop versus what songs you kind of want to keep in the tuck? It's all about a feeling. Like I know as soon as I start recording and then when it's recorded and I listen to it, that's mm -hmm. when I know I'm dropping that song. Now, is it like you listen to it and it's like, I know this shit going to be a hit or you listen to it like, nah, I'm fucking with it? Nah, I know. Like that's why I don't really release a lot of music. And if I do, it's just really a large project mm -hmm. but i'm very particular to where it's like i know when i'm like i know i'm gonna drop it i know i'm gonna, I'm gonna use that and i know this is gonna be a hit mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so i don't it's, i do gotta get in the habit of just recording and being comfortable is like i i fuck with it but i'm the type of person where if i gotta record it, I, I know it gotta be a hit mm -hmm. i'm, I'm okay. weird with my shit but you feel me that's just that's just how i am so if you had to describe yourself using one of your songs what would it be A lot of shit, all of them shit. But one, freak. <laughs> yeah. That's the song you got with Billy, right? Huh? That's the song with Billy, right? Yeah, oh, Beneficial too, because Beneficial Straight Facts. Speaking of freak, you, you made that song with Billy. Yeah, facts. The Shout visuals was dope. Mm -hmm. So how was it working with, like, do you like working with female artists? I love them. What? They, they running shit right now. Shout out to all the artists, but the females got it right now. Mm -hmm. Shout out to y'all. But, yeah, like, I love working with, uh, um, with female artists. Shout out Connie, Billy B, Lola, 
London, K, all of them. Like they wildin', right? Young Devin, they wildin'. Mm -hmm. I love it. If I want, if, it, if if I had the choice, I want to work with all of them. Nice. I want to be Thanos to that shit. I want I want to collect all the Infinity Stones. Crying. So I mean, what you thought about the site that came out? With, with all beautiful, literally all beautiful. of your name. I was talking to Gabe. I'm like, yo, you did something that a lot of people trying to prosper that they can't make happen. Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. Like that was, shit was fire. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like shout out to Gabe too on the radar. All right. So as you growing up, what's something that you've learned about the industry so far that like you wish that maybe you would have had a heads up on beforehand? Anything? Was some in the industry that I wish I had. Like a heads up on, like something that you wish you would have known sooner. Shit, I don't even know. Well, shit, then that's good. If you don't know, then that's good. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm worried about. Me and my team got going on right now. I ain't thinking about it. We are the industry. How about that? So everything is going as planned. Yeah. For, I mean, my, in my knowledge, for real. We doing what we got to do. We doing it independently, too. Okay. So there haven't been any hiccups so far. I mean, it's always going to be hiccups. That's just part of the, this music life. You feel me? It's just getting back up and just upping it. You feel what I'm saying? But it's going to be days when you wake up, you feel discouraged, or it's going to be a hiccup. But that's just normal shit. You just got to rise above from that. So, yeah, that's right. Hmm. Okay. All right, so how would you classify the music that you make? I know that you you're kind of versatile. I would say mm. you make a lot of different types. Talk but what what would you say like if you had to classify it? How would you? It's a Harlem nigga. I don't know. Like I don't know where I don't know how I can okay specify myself because I'm I could do whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know. Like I could I could do this, the vocal shit. I could rap. It's whatever you feel like the the audience want to hear at that moment. I got songs for everybody. Okay, so forget the audience. What do you like doing the best? Whatever the whatever what type of vibe I'm on. It don't matter. Okay. Like for real. That's a real answer. Like whatever vibe and mood I am feeling at that at that moment, mm -hmm. this is what I'm doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we already talked about who you were listening to growing up. Do you have any inspirations? Um, overall, outside of music as well too. Um, let's talk about music first, and then okay. you can give me your inspiration um, outside. My inspiration with music is, I would say, Rick Ross, for what I'm saying, um, Tiana Taylor, Harlem, Harlem Goddess, um, Lil Durk, uh, you feel me? Mm -hmm. and people like that. Oh, Ronnie Fig, um, creator of Kif. Um, yeah, I could say that off the head right now. Okay, and well, I just I just actually went out of outside of music too because I, I said the fashion. But yeah, that's say, that's my you? people though. That's I'm sorry, yeah, but yeah, that's my people. That's my inspiration for right now. Okay, mm. so that's all of them. Or you got somebody for else? right now? Yeah, for okay. right now. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So and going off of that, who are your top five artists right now? Top five artists right now? Oh yeah, that's easy. I got Kendrick Lamar at number one. Mm -hmm. I got The Weeknd at number two. Mm -hmm. I got Lil Durk at number three. I got Schoolboy at number four. This is right now. I ain't going to talk like that a lot. Okay. At number five, I would say either Lil Baby or Gunner. That's my niggas right now. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I say Gunner. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I, I missed it, but I didn't hear no New York artists on your list. Am I bugging? Nah, you didn't. You listening to anybody right now? Yes, I am. Who you listening? Who on your playlist? I ain't going to lie. Shout out. Don't, I'm don't. glad you said that too. I listened to Tim heavier since he dropped Cash Go Bang. I listened to my man Tim. Mm -hmm. um, who I listen to in New York right now? Um, I listen to Ray Mula, um, Neek Bucks. Okay. Um, you know, World, Delhi. Okay, so outside of, the, outside of the ladies that you already mentioned, is there anybody that you would like to collab with? Um, like I said, I want to work with Cash. I want to work with Fleego from Gangtivity. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to work with. It's a couple of people I want to work out. Um, work with. Um, Lola, Lola, um, Lola Brooke. Well, you said outside of the girls. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, that's that's. It. Okay. Well, I see that you be with like Capella a lot. Oh shit! <laughs> I'm like, see, that's what I'm with. <laughs> Cat. Let me talk about. That, yeah, like, yo, so listen. how did y'all, how did y'all meet? How did y'all meet? Like, just being uptown, you feel what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. he been doing music, I heard, he heard about me, I heard about him, and then we eventually just started just, like, cookouts, different events in the summer, we just linking, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's the fuck music right now, we just linking, like, mm -hmm. and we, we ended up becoming cool, and then we, 
obviously we got common interests and also with music too. So it was like the relationship was just there. And not only just Cap, everybody around his circle, we had a, I had a connection with. So mm-hmm. it just made shit easier. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's another nigga I want to work with. And I feel like it's definitely top in the city right now. I don't, even, I don't understand how I just forgot that. But yeah, Capella is, is definitely talented. His album is going to be OD. Are you like on I, it? I can't speak about that right now. But his album OD. It's not a no. Hmm? I said it wasn't a no. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but his album, his album going to be OD. Like, Gallus is the tip of the iceberg. But mm-hmm. he got so much vibes coming through. He's going to shake the town for real. Shout out to Cap. Shout out to the whole ATF. You feel me? Okay. So, do you feel like you have the support of Harlem? Hell yeah. I'm Harlem yeah. baby for a reason. Okay. Hell yeah. All right. Well, that's good. <laughs> I mean, I just wanted to ask because I noticed that you like, what is it? The Juneteenth? Yes. 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 I'm, I, I throw it with Deli and Ori as well. Yeah. Were you doing that before you started making music too? Not like, how long has that been going on? It's um, it's about to be the three-year anniversary for Juneteenth. We did it for two years already, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what made you want to do that? Like just for the culture? I always been heavy into throwing parties and you know doing shit for the people. Like even in high school, I used to do mad parties, house parties, and shit like that. So mm-hmm. It just made sense. Like and it coincides with music too. Like you know, just doing shit for the community, having people to pop out and having fun without any drama or nothing. That shit happening. Like mm-hmm. we literally have different hoods, different sets, really pulling up. And, Bob. Do people like tap into your stuff more like after every cookout? Like, do you feel I like feel it like, gives yeah, you exposure? Yeah, yeah, that's just inevitable. It's gonna happen because mm-hmm. more people you attract with just cookouts. They're gonna find out who's throwing it, who is that. Mm-hmm. You make music, oh, let me tap in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. That, uh, little shit like that also make people engage into what you really do. Mm-hmm. So yeah. okay, so like, do you do you feel like stuff like that, like being outside, word of mouth is. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like that's a marketing tool? Do you feel like... What do you use as your marketing tool? We're going to start there. Let me say that. What I use as my marketing tool? Yeah. Um, yeah, you. I wouldn't say... I don't want, I don't want to say throwing parties a marketing tool because I do that genuinely. Mm-hmm. But marketing tools is just being me. Just, just so. doing what I do and just posting it. Like, or, you know, letting people know my life and what I do. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily be like, oh, I'm... Just showing people what I do, and if you want to gravitate and you want to be a part of that, and you want to, then that's when I, that's when the real organic fans come to me. Mm. You know what I'm saying it's not, yeah. So you don't do I'm nothing saying. like to push your stuff out there or nothing. No, but I need to. Like I need to like start doing like more blogs, putting more digital marketing on that shit. Right now it's just literally organic. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's but, good. Yeah, but it's it's to a point to where I'm at a point where I do need to start doing digital marketing and, mm-hmm. and real promotion marketing. For me to up my shit, right? Like it's, it's, it has to, it has to happen. So that's what we work. Me and my team working on right now is just like we have everything. We just now once we put that digital market in, we out of here. So for an upcoming artist, what are three things that you think are like the most important keys to success? Um, definitely a team. Number two, being true to yourself and being consistent and persistent with your work. A lot of people have those two, but they're not consistent or don't have the proper work ethics to be successful. You mm-hmm. got to be consistent, keep drop. You got to be persistent, knowing that, keep pushing out to the audience. Mm-hmm. Know yourself, because a lot of people rap about what they don't live, or mm-hmm. they rapping about somebody else's shit. They just capping. And your team, they all got to know their position. They all got to know their role. And y'all got to just prosper on that avenue. You know what I'm saying? So you said a lot of people, they rap what they, yeah, they facts. not what they rap about, basically, facts. is what I got from that. Yeah, they do. So would you say, like, there's a part of you in all the music that you write? Of course. Yeah? I don't never write no cap. Like, ain't no cap in my rap. Like, it's always going to be a bar to, like, you know, you just saying just out of wittiness or just, you know, just talking. But 98% of what I say is real. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, for me, or I might even, sometimes too, you might even be talking about your mans. But for the most part, I talk, I talk about my shit. Okay, so we at the beginning of 2022. What, what can we expect coming up for the, for the rest of the year? More creative shit, more dope shit, more videos, more singles. Mm-hmm. You know, um, more GGU shit. Okay. We got a lot of things coming in store. You said more videos, and we didn't really talk about this, yes, but sir. you just dropped some fire yeah. visuals. Shout out, Bully. Shout out, Tim. Shout out, gang. MF out right now, motherfucker. You are. Yes, MF. So let's talk about that real quick. Mm-hmm. Like, where did that vision come from? You know, just trying to tap in and just relate to what people go through daily. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it was a message to where it's like, you know, no matter how much love and loyalty you pour to a person, like, it may not be reciprocated. And sometimes, like, you get the short end of the stick for that. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people 
in the towns, not even in the towns, in the whole world go through that. So right. I just wanted to kind of like go into that lane and speak to people like, it be like that and it is what it is. Mm -hmm. still going to be here. We still going to get it done. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we wanted to correlate that with the visuals. So we wanted to we just execute on that aspect. So whose idea was it? Like, Oh, it was definitely mine, but mm -hmm. it would have never came into play without also Bully as well, too. So. Right. But I definitely wrote the treatment, you know. And, yeah. and that's usually how it goes for most of the videos. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, I really sit down, like, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning writing my shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then... I send it out, I send it to my direct my directors, um, and then they put their little sense in and mm -hmm. then right there's a movie. So how long does it usually take you to like come up with the come up with the idea and then record and then have the finished product? Like how how long does the whole process take? It depends. Like there's really no time stamp on it. Like I said, it's all about a vibe, it's all about a, a feeling. So mm -hmm. sometimes it could take literally an hour, sometimes it could take five days. It depends. Like it depends on how I feel in that moment. Okay. Um, all right, so you say, you know, you up in there, you getting more mm -hmm. creative and everything. So I know we talked about collabs that you want to do, but do you have some, like, that's already working that you could share with us? I fuck with y'all, so I'm going to tell y'all what's going on. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Um, some collab shits I'm working on right now. Um, me and my engineer, Cajun Waters, we doing a little EP going on right now. Mm -hmm. Me and Billy B working on some right now. That's just that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and the Groove Guards is a label. We also working on our own compilation shit as well. We have a Groove Guard camp in two weeks where all the creators, writers, producers, and different people come in and just work for three days in the Poconos. Mm -hmm. And we're going to really make music and magic. So, yeah, those type of projects we're working on. So that's exclusive to like the Groove Guides, or is that like something that other people could tap? Nah, into? other people's tapping into. That's why we we making it a camp, and we also inviting outside people to come in that we feel is fit, mm. or feels talented, or you know, just we want to work with other other people. As mad dope other artists out here. Are y'all still that's accepting um, <laughs> reservation? Can you can people what you, still? What you want to do? <laughs> what you wanna do? Like, can, if if let's no, say still, somebody was on. watching this and they was like, "Oh, that sounds good. I wanna, I wanna go to the Poconos." Yeah, we're gonna do this annually, but okay. this one is, is a dub. It's already booked. Everybody in their place right now. Damn. So <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Right. All right. So, is there anything like that you would just advise upcoming artists as they're going up? Like, yeah, like I said too. Be real to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying you gotta really be tapped into what you if you if you love music really be tapped into it don't move on other people's time and don't do it because you see your means doing it love this shit and really do it like you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and that but I do want to come off this real quick you know shout out to all the artists shout out to all the artists drill music is doing this thing is on its peak right now I love what it's doing it's putting New York on the map but as bloggers talk of the town niggas like what New York sound like. It's more music to drill. You feel what I'm saying? Y'all need to tap into more of these artists out here. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and y'all, like I said, shout out to all of them. I'm jacking it. You feel what I'm saying? Y'all doing an amazing job. But y'all missing a lot of creative and a lot of artists out, out here that's getting overlooked. Mm -hmm. Because y'all only focus on one aspect of this music shit in New York. There's so many lanes. There's so many creatives and so many artists out here that they not getting noticed because blogs it tend to go what's trending right now. Mm -hmm. Y'all can make shit trending, just got to focus on other shit. So I'm, I'm just saying, y'all got to tap into what's going on in New York. So, you know what I'm saying? So if you had to, because that was a very strong statement. But yeah. of course, you know, Facts. I can't validate how you feel. Mm. And I respect you mm. for coming up here and saying Nah, yeah, nah, I fuck with y'all. So I, I just want to be open to where it's like, there's so many niggas out here, so many dope artists mm -hmm. that's not getting the proper recognition that they should be getting. Like who? Girl Code. You feel what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of people out here. and Girl Code... Girl, yeah. Nah, girl code is cool. I'm just saying, there's a lot of people out here like that y'all missing, I feel like. I just feel like y'all need to tap in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Y'all doing an amazing job covering what y'all need to be covering, mm -hmm. but y'all also missing a couple of shit too. And okay. I, that's why I'm here to tell y'all because I feel like nobody going to tell y'all. And I okay. fuck with y'all. I fuck with Talk of the Town. I fuck with, you feel me? I fuck with all these blog sites. I'm, I'm, glad, I, I, I'm glad I'm up here. But I just want to give y'all my insight. Drops mic. <laughs> so, so is there anything else that you would like for the people to know before we get off this? Um, anything that we haven't covered yet? Anything you want them to look out for? Uh, I just want to thank y'all. I want to thank y'all for getting me up here. This platform is amazing, like I said. I want to thank y'all for even putting me as a nominee and actually winning this award for Most Creative Artist of the Year. 
like I said, I'm blessed, but it's more work to do. I want to rack up on these. I want like 10 of these, and I feel like, right. you know mm. what I'm saying? But like I said, I appreciate y'all. Y'all doing y'all damn thing. Y'all been tapping in since I started doing music. You already know the vibe. And, you know, y'all doing y'all thing. We just going to up it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, hold on. <laughs> Fergie baby merch out now. Don't fuck around. You know what I mean? I got my own hoodies. We do we do that's, our own things out here. I'm not gonna. That's cute or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> nah, well, yeah. Shout out, shout out to y'all. All right, so shout out your Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is that you got. Harlem baby, my Instagram is Fergie dot baby. Um, you can find me on all digital platforms. Um, all you dumb volume two is out now. Expect more work to be done, more videos, more singles, more GGU, more all that, more hauling, you feel what I'm saying? Y'all saw. All right, y'all. Thanks for tapping in.